Hello, I am Robert Levin, and I am presenting our paper on dynamic suspense management through adaptive gameplay. So the first thing we need to do is define suspense. Suspense is a feeling of anxiety or excitement about an uncertain future. Game designers often want to manipulate uh, players' emotional experiences while they're playing games. But most methods are, of these are based on films, TV, music, or sports, um, and not very video game specific. These similar techniques include things such as manipulating sound effects or story elements, um, but don't really focus on uh, game mechanics specifically. That is the focus of our paper. Um, in our paper, we performed research into existing models for suspense and then developed a system uh, for managing that suspense around a horror game that we made. We then conducted a user study uh, and had players play test our game with the suspense management system in place. Our work provides more tools and evidence for game designers to manage gameplay experience through adaptive gameplay mechanics. We began our work by looking at existing models for suspense and player experience. The first of which is the Zhu model for managing suspense in games. This model breaks games down into three different layers, story, gameplay, and artifact. We then began looking at other models to help us break these elements down and examine them. For example, the Shung and Young paper is one of the papers that used plan-based models to manipulate story structures in order to manipulate reader suspense in stories. One of the many papers that looked at how artifacts can be used to manipulate suspense was the Vachere Tomperon paper, um, which specifically looked at how sound effects can be used to manipulate anxiety and suspense in narratives. In gameplay-specific areas, uh, one example is Liu, which looked at how changing the level of difficulty in a game uh, affected player anxiety. Once our game is broken down into, into these elements, we can then estimate the player's suspense and feed that into a suspense manager to manipulate the story, gameplay, and artifact elements. Finally, looking at the Bailey and Ju paper on managing suspense dynamically in, in video games, we realized that we could further categorize these elements into three categories of hope, fear, and uncertainty. And then we could use that as our primary system for managing suspense in gameplay. Our goal was to study how adaptive gameplay can be used to manipulate suspense in a video game without a story, and how effective this technique might be in implementation. We began our design process by looking at various game genres and determining what would best fit our current model for suspense. We quickly found that a horror game would suit our goals best. Our framework relies heavily on hope, fear, and uncertainty, which are all elements that are found in abundance within the horror genre. One of our major issues in design consideration was uh, how we deal with false information given to the player. Many games that require the player learn the mechanics over time and become more proficient as they play. Because our suspense manager seeks to actively change the mechanics in real time, we had to be careful when designing what our suspense manager would influence. Influencing the wrong mechanics could bring a sort of mistrust in the player, who might end up feeling cheated out by learning the skills to succeed. Another major design choice was the game's point of view. We considered virtual reality, first person, and top-down 2D perspectives. We chose a top-down 2D perspective because it conveys more information to the player. We assumed that more information would mean the player would be more easily influenced by the effects of the suspense manager. However, we later learned that 2D perspectives also have a significant drawback in terms of immersion and the experience of fear. Our game, Photophobic, is a top-down 2D horror game set in a creepy apartment complex. The player has just woken up to find themselves alone. Now they must find the red keycard and get to the elevator and exit. 
In it, the player must make their way through a series of perilous rooms to find the correct key cards. Using only their fleeting flashlight, they must also eliminate and avoid the many dangers that they face along the way. An example run of a player might go as follows. After finding a blue key card, the player moves onto the blue door to enter. After moving in, noises hint that an enemy might be lurking inside, so the player turns on their flashlight. Doing so will continuously drain their battery, but without the light they will not be able to see the pair of enemies sneaking up upon them. In doing so, the player stumbles upon a battery spawned in using the suspense manager. After eliminating the enemies using their flashlight and finding a new keycard, the player heads out to explore another part of the complex. So first we had to design our own model for suspense based upon our research. Our model is an estimation of the player's level of suspense that changes as the player receives information in the game world. The level of suspense for the player can be quantified based on the OCC model of hope, fear, and uncertainty described uh, previously. We began by breaking the various game mechanics into our three categories of hope, fear, and uncertainty, and then assigning weights to each of them. We determine the weights of each of these mechanics by l using a system referred to as fuzzy logic as defined in a paper written by David Capello. Fuzzy logic is a system in which we define how much a mechanic affects a certain element of the game. In this case, we have three categories of high, medium, and low. For example, the detection of an enemy NPC can have a high increase in fear. Not knowing the location of a battery pickup can have a low increase in uncertainty. The specific details may vary from game to game and will be determined by game designers and developers. For our game, we have this breakdown. Once we have created this breakdown, we can create equations to evaluate the game and determine the player's level of suspense at the current game state. We determine the value of the modifiers through testing of our game. We specified weights based on designer expectations and then uh, had the system adjust those weights during play to ensure no mechanic overpowers the system. With our calculated values for hope, fear, and uncertainty, we can finally have a value that represents the player's level of suspense during a state of gameplay. The calculated level for suspense was not necessarily the same suspense felt by the human player, but served as an estimation of player suspense, which is based on the OCC cognitive model. In order to run our suspense management system, we created a target suspense curve for our game based on MIT and McKenzie's work on emotional narrative arcs. The game will adjust the behavior of the game object based on the differences between the estimated suspense curve and the target suspense curve. We can break our suspense curve down and put the various points at key points in the level. As the player progressed through the level and reached these key points, we would shift to the next stage of the curve allowing the suspense manager to account for players progressing at wildly different pace. The manager was given control over various mechanics of the game to keep the estimated suspense level in line with the desired level. The mechanics selected can all be seen in the previous slides on Fuzzy Select. We chose these mechanics for the suspense manager in an effort to remain within our design goals of ensuring the player does not feel cheated by the system while still having the system be able to make meaningful changes. Each of these mechanics is outside the player's ability to notice when making small adjustments and therefore will go unnoticed. For example, a player may not notice their flashlight is draining 1% per second versus 1.5% per second, but they will notice their battery charge is low, which will occur faster in that case. The AI then has high impact and low impact changes that it can make to the state of the game at any point. High impact changes are more dramatic actions like the spawning of items or enemies, which are very noticeable and not easy to undo. Our suspense manager uses the high and low impact changes to evaluate, analyze, and adjust the expected level of suspense in our game in order to match it to the target suspense curve. We conducted a user study after finishing game development. We had five volunteers participate in our study, all undergraduate students ranging from ages 18 to 21. Each participant was set up with an Apple Watch in order to measure the participant's heart rate throughout the gameplay. After finishing the game, each participant was also set up with a recording of their playthrough. 
following the same time between heart rate checks every 30 seconds, we would ask them to roughly estimate their level of suspense on a scale of 0 to 10. This way, we would be able to analyze the difference in suspense values from our in-game data versus our player reported data. The results of our testing can be seen here. Each blue line shows a player's level of suspense estimated by the game AI, and each red line shows a player's heart rate at that same time. The sample size is too small to conduct meaningful statistical analysis. While there is no clear correlation between the estimated suspense and heart rate for testers 1 and 4, there are some similarities between the patterns in the estimated suspense level and heart rate for testers 2 and 3. Whether heart rate is a reliable measurement of suspense is still debatable, especially in low suspense situations. Our preliminary research into this area is inconclusive, but we hope further work will yield more data and analysis. The figures shown here show the self-rated suspense level by players and the desired suspense curve from two separate gameplay sessions. Here, the rise and fall of the two curves show some similarities. While inconclusive, these preliminary results demonstrate the potential for our suspense model and management systems. With more data and tweaking, the suspense curves could become more accurate estimates for suspense and anxiety. For example, the curve did not account for the drops in suspense that occurred when the player ends up lost for extended periods of time. These factors could result in players experiencing very different levels of anxiety than we anticipated at the particular moments in gameplay. We have presented our study in which we have tested a computational model for suspense for non-narrative gameplay. Using this model, we generate and manage user suspense using only gameplay, without the intervention of narrative and artifacts. Our small user study shows some potential, but more experiments are needed to come to any definitive conclusions. This model can be used for non-narrative driven games, or to supplement narrative-based computational models of suspense in story-driven games. In the future, we would need to do more user studies and collect more data in order to improve our suspense model and perform statistical analysis in order to draw more meaningful conclusions about the correlations between our system and player experience. Thank you for watching this video presentation on our research paper. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation.